What's going on, Doombots? Tony Skinjili here with another team review. This time, finally, I get to do Supernatural. So if you don't know this about me, Supernatural is one of my favorite teams in the game, not because it's the best at anything, not because it's adorable, but because uh, when you play it, it is incredibly fun once you've invested in it. Now, as you can see, my Supernatural team is just about 240k. So I have not over invested in them. I also don't have many tier fours. We'll talk about it. They do need quite a few. Need is a rough word. They do benefit from quite a few, but I'll talk about that later. So as you know, we're gonna go over availability and now they're all available, at least. We're gonna go over usability, which they have plenty. And of course, we're gonna go over breakpoints. So before we do that, we're gonna take this team into a blitz fight as we discuss availability and uh, yeah, we'll beat up these guys. Doesn't really matter. So, Supernatural uh, has just recently become available to the average player for farming. That's why I'm gonna make this video right now. The key component to Supernatural is that two of the characters are available in one store. Uh, that would be Baron Mordo and Scarlet Witch are available in the arena store. Uh, Doctor Strange is node farmable as is Elsa and Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider is not available early. Elsa kind of available around level 60 to 65 somewhere if you push really hard on her node. But Ghost Rider himself uh, is available significantly later. Um, not quite an early game team as far as availability is concerned. But the parts are there and it won't be too difficult for you to assemble the team once you've you know gotten through a decent part of the early game and you're starting to build out multiple teams i don't recommend working on them relatively early uh, you're losing too much opportunity cost farming two characters from the same store especially since they're not currently used to unlock anything dr strange isn't necessarily a great character but he is a really good utility character where you can come in to kind of counter specific things elsa outside of this team is not impressive unless you've over invested in her and ghost rider is one of the most overrated characters in the game but because he's available so late in the game and because what he does uh, as a utility against some metas is so important and mainly because he's one of the strongest characters and the only damage dealer on this team next to Elsa, it's important to note that uh, Ghost Rider is kind of the missing piece of this team or almost the leader of this team. So if you can't access Ghost Rider, putting together the rest of the parts of the team might not be the best, even though they will be useful for some things. And let's talk about where they're gonna be useful now. So like I said, availability, not super early, but some of them will be. And honestly, by the time you get to the point where you would even consider working on these characters, you probably would have accidentally premium orbed or milestone ormed your way into at least two of them. Um, now, usability. This team is pretty useful uh, at every stage of the game, uh, either in its entire form or with a handful of characters. That Let's look at it from a perspective. Uh, they can single-handedly clear anything in the Mystic Lane. Anything. Anything at all. They are a team specifically designed to succeed in the Mystic Lane. Now that said, since you're not going to be able to farm all the characters, it might be more inclined if you made a purchase or two or happen to luckily unlock one or two of them. Ghost Rider, of course, being a 100 shard unlock is the hardest one. But if you do have this team complete, congratulations, you'll be able to walk through all of the Mystic campaign as quickly as you want just because of what this team does um, as far as raids are concerned i wouldn't necessarily use them as a raid team they don't quite have the sustain but you can definitely combine a bunch of characters uh, maybe ghost rider and scarlet witch and mordo um, with a healer and a dedicated tank those guys might do enough for the raids as you may know if you're doing raids Anytime you see a Mordo on the other side, you're mad. Uh, it doesn't quite work the same way. The uh, AI doesn't get mad when they see a Mordo. But you do have a little bit of sustainability with Scarlet Witch and Mordo. Ghost Rider does pump out a little bit of extra energy. They will be okay in raids. I don't believe there's any one thing in raids they're great at. Uh, I wouldn't even necessarily use them in the Mystic-specific 
lanes, and I don't believe Supernatural has a specific tag in Gamma. Uh, they are functionally a full cosmic team, so you can use them in the cosmic lane, but their sustain is questionable at best. Uh, if you were to use them, I would definitely try to put someone who's capable of resurrecting um, or healing, like a Shuri or another Minerva, in lieu of probably someone like Scarlet Witch, but that's just random advice. War is kind of where this team shines, and the main reason why is they are adequate on both sides of the war, but depending on your investment, you will be able to get a lot of high impact wins against key meta teams. Some notable ones are Asgardians, uh, Colson Shield, BKT. They, they have the ingredients to be able to defeat a lot of different teams on defense. Uh, sometimes they require a little bit more investment than others, which we'll get into in a second. But as far as war is concerned, they are great on offense, pretty good on defense. You won't regret having them, you know? Even if you've beaten all the content without having them, they are still a great, almost aim-like style team in war. Uh, as a matter of fact, you can use them to fight against aim, and aim can fight them. It depends on who's in control and who's where, but suffice it to say, they are very good in war. Outside of that, I don't believe the team has any major usability uh, where anything that needs to be done, but handful of characters, specifically Ghost Rider and Doctor Strange, are very good utility characters. I see a lot of high-end, uh, high-powered, high-investment Ghost Riders on arena defense because Phoenix dies, so Ghost Rider will hit somebody and he's relatively tanky. And that might be good enough. Um, for me, it's never really been much of a threat. Also, I don't have that strong Ghost Rider, so I can't say firsthand, but I'm sure some people can watch other people and build their own opinions on that. Uh, my biggest downside to this team is that Elsa and Ghost Rider are the only damage dealers, but they're really good at it. So characters like Mordo, Scarlet Witch, and Doctor Strange are three controllers on a very low damage team that fights do tend to go a little bit longer. But that's where we get into breakpoints and with the investment level you need to get into. So breakpoints, right? We'll start from the bottom and work our way up. But one thing I will say is that uh, there are tier fours that are required for them to counter certain teams. There are tier fours that are required for specific characters. But I don't believe this team requires any tier fours in order for you to feel what they're supposed to do. I just think that the tier fours uh, help fine tune where they're going to be useful. And I'll go into that as we talk. So we'll start with Doctor Strange. Bolts of Balthak, his basic extra offense down for one to two turns. Mm, sure, not really worth it, but okay. Uh, Winds of Watoom, always flipping positive effects versus 90% chance. You know, this is kind of the sure it up defense. If you need the team to be able to beat Colson Shield, that 10% chance to fail might not be good enough, even though it will remove them anyway. That's up to you. I really can't comment on that. Uh, Books of the Vashanti. Uh, this one is incredibly relevant. It increases the number of characters that are revived. So even if you just have Doctor Strange with one other supernatural character, when you uh, invest in this, he will guaranteed revive two characters, one dead ally and one specifically supernatural ally. Obviously on the supernatural team it'll be both, it'll be two characters, but on any other team just be careful, make sure you either have another supernatural or know that it won't rev two. Uh, then it heals everybody for unfortunately not enough health. You know, I hate when you see hard numbers of health, but that's not really what this is for. Uh, at least it is a decent chunk as opposed to like an extra thousand or two thousand. So it does uh, change it from five to eight thousand. It doesn't add eight thousand to it, but uh, it's basically the second revive. This is a very key component, especially in fights where you know one or two of your characters, like a Scarlet Witch or a Mordo, are going to go down really quickly. The other benefit is if Ghost Rider does happen to die, it pretty much always guarantees that this is going to be. Uh, relatively charged, so you should be able to res Ghost Rider quickly. And the last is Master of the Arcane Arts. Um, the plus 10% chance to fill an ally speed bar is not very impactful. If this character has three or more supernatural allies, duh. Uh, when a positive effect is applied to an enemy, heal for 5% of this character's health. Uh, that uh, gives him deflect in addition. So it makes him a little bit more tanky. I do see this a lot 
And even though originally I was like, that doesn't seem important, it becomes incredibly hard to kill very high investment Doctor Stranges. So I wouldn't necessarily put this in him if he's geared tier 10 or 11 and consider it meaningful. But if you are pushing your supernatural team, this is one of the investments that they will require in order to make him a little bit more tanky, which he does need to be in order to make sure that he can resurrect the characters he does. Plus, you're going to flip on his turn one usually anyway, so uh, giving him a little bit extra sustain will be incredibly important. Moving into the next character, and one of the weakest characters on the team, not because she's weak, but just because of what she does doesn't necessarily help the team in any major way. We have Scarlet Witch, Hexbolt, standard issue, mystic, basic. Sometimes they get rend effects, uh, and we don't know what they are. They're one or two of a pool of three, which is offense down, defense down, and slow. And piercing damage, absolutely great, but she doesn't quite do a lot of damage. She has a very high stat here. Um, it doesn't seem to hurt that much when she uses it. Uh, she does, because her high damage stat uh, exists, she is targeted by people who target high damage, like Coulson, so she tends to die really quickly, but uh, the multipliers just aren't really there, even though it is piercing. Warp Reality is her quote-unquote heal, even though it's not a heal at all, it just moves things around. Uh, apply Deflect to all allies, 50% chance to apply defense up to each ally if you upgrade Tier 4s to guarantee defense up. This, again, is worth it in a very specific endgame scenario where you want to make sure they all have defense up, but you're probably not firing this one off quickly. You tend to not uh, use this as the defense up, and the, if you make the investment as a defense up, you're spending a lot of resources uh, for an ability that is not that impactful, but there are situations where you would. Chaos Wave, attack all enemies for an arbitrary amount of damage whatever tier fouring it only thing that really matters is they always get defense down that can be huge uh, if she can survive long enough where you want to use this ability the uh, negative effect prolongment plus this kind of goes right after dr strange so it's going to be great especially uh, with a guaranteed defense down this is one of her higher impact tier fours uh, this is the one where you can put it in pretty much at any time for her team and it'll matter so if you are looking to tier 4, I do feel bad about ever saying to recommend a tier 4, but if you really like the Supernatural team, specifically her, specifically this, probably going to be really impactful. Uh, and then we have her passive uh, on turn from 40 to 50% chance to spread a negative effect. This will not spread stun. I, I don't think this effect matters enough that 10% on it's going to win me a game. So I, I'm going to be hard pressed to invest in this. Some people swear by it. I do not believe in percent chance increases unless it makes a very meaningful percent percentage increase. Uh, if this went from 30 to 50, then, you know, every third time to every other time kind of makes sense. But here it's basically already every other turn and she's not going to take that many turns. So yeah can't i can't in good faith advocate for this but if you did it cool you know i, I don't know if you could ever say that that 10 percent made a difference statistically but it doesn't matter to me i'm not a big fan of that uh she's also the weakest member of this team so if i were to believe new supernatural characters like i don't know blade or morbius were coming out at some point this year i'd imagine she would also be pulled off of that team we will see uh ghost rider is the best character on this team because he's the coolest character on this team he is pretty good as far as uh, damage he has some really interesting kit numbers like city and mystic and brawler which means you can use him on any city hero node wink you can use him with other brawlers wink wink uh he's very good outside of this team and he only gets better with you also notice as you see he'll be the only character i've tier forward um, because it's just that good. But let's take a quick look at all abilities. Hellfire, attack primary target for 200 damage and apply bleed for two turns. Great, I wouldn't tier for it. I don't think 250 damage matters, but um, we'll see in a second where it might, especially when assists start coming into play. Hell cycle, attack primary target for 260 damage, apply two bleeds, attack all adjacent targets for just a little bit less damage. Like 260 to 240, that's barely less. Uh, and apply two bleeds. This attack cannot be blocked and cannot miss. What? 
uh, the increase goes about 30% more, but it is to three different characters, so this is a 90% damage increase, and since he is a damage dealer, that's not nothing. Uh, clearly, if it was piercing, we'd be like, go all in on it, but since it's not, it's up to you. Uh, it is a very high impact for him upgrade. Uh, the weird thing about this is apply bleed for two turns to primary target, which, uh, since it does apply two bleed, uh, it doesn't necessarily read correctly. It applies them two stacks of it so the bleeds will be two separate and then they will go over two turns um eh, dude, that's not really important but if you're going for damage anyway duh more damage right so none of these independently make it worth investing but together they kind of do uh penance stare is his big dumb idiot attack that does big dumb idiot damage uh, up to 500 percent absolutely worth it he's the big dumb idiot damage dealer please by all means Invest in him if you really want this team to murder people when he takes his turn. I'll also mention that this apply offense down and defense down only seems like it works. He has relatively below average focus. Not that far, but not great. And uh, it doesn't stick that often. So just a reminder, the apply offense down and defense down, it looks great. Doesn't happen that often. This is really about the damage. If charged, this attack gains 200% drain. So he gains literally double the health of the damage he would do and he loses the charge we'll talk about charge in a second but the more often he can do this attack the better your team is going to be at uh murdering people especially in key fights like against colson where there's going to be a turn where you just need to take medic out or something this will be uh, the way you're going to end up doing it uh, as for spirit of vengeance the tier four i've placed it in on death grant two abilities to all supernatural allies uh, the reason to invest in the tier four is the on summon death gaining an additional uh, ability energy with some more max health but under normal circumstances the attack if any non-summoned ally dies non-summoned uh, attack the enemy that killed the target for 500 damage which is insane and gain one charge up to a maximum of five generate three ability energy for self uh he's gonna pen and stare every time you kill another person on the full supernatural team he's gonna pen and stare every time you do that um, and maybe even die and maybe give Doctor Strange energy, but it's huge. He ends up doing so much damage so quickly. Uh, it's basically set up so that if you, even if you just pen and stare, if their next attack kills one of your characters, you will pen and stare again. Uh, when a negative effect is applied to an enemy, feel speed bar of self and all supernatural allies by 3%. Duh, this is absolutely great. Uh, gain 40% max health. Supernatural allies gain 40% max health. Yeah, that's a real amount of max health. That's huge. Considering the fact that they are not particularly tanky to begin with, that's a lot of health. And then gaining additional focus. You can see his, but you don't see the others. And the others really do have pretty decent focus to begin with. But uh, like I said, that wasn't really the purpose of the tier 4. You actually get that at level 3. It was the 20% uh, extra health instead of Going to 20, it goes to 40, and it was the third ability energy that he gains guaranteeing his ability to do that. This is probably the only, uh, if you have nothing else to do and you want to put a tier 4 in a character, this makes this team probably an entire tier level better than it was before just because of how much damage he does. Ultimately, you'll decide, but I found enough value in it to do it, and it's been helping me greatly. Uh, moving into the next character, we have Mordo. Mordo's a little bit quick, standard issue, dumb person, mystic, basic, where it does damage and applies once to random negative effects. Mesmerize. Now, there's some some questions about this, right? Some people think that the stun is amazing. Some people prefer the blind, uh, or a chance to blind. I am on the second group. I think that while sometimes I do cross my fingers and hope to land the stun, I find more often than not I'd rather a blind. I think having them waste their turn, specifically the character that I want to, is a little bit more impactful than just having them miss a turn. Uh, that said, it depends on when it happens too. Like if Thor's about to ult or charge up, I definitely want him blinded. I don't want him stunned so I can deal with it later. That's just one example. Uh, I know plenty of people who've invested in for a long time and said, no, it's absolutely great to guarantee the stun or the guarantee that the stun against the resistance check. Um, the other thing is the number of targets that uh, might become blinded. 
50% chance to blind up to three other targets. Again, maybe. Uh, it's great, but you can't really rely on it. Unless it's the AI one in U7, then he's going to blind your entire team somehow, and you're going to be miserable about it. 50% chance to slow up to two targets. Again, super random. It's a really cool ability. It does a lot of stuff. I didn't necessarily feel the need to tier for it, but you guys might. I wouldn't I wouldn't feel bad about it if I did. I just haven't, and I don't want to. Uh, Demons of Danak. Uh, this is his worst ability, and it's... Uh, for you to use it, it's very low impact unless you're specifically countering the Asgardians in a war fight. Uh, you definitely want that heal block on as quickly as you can get it. If you can get it. Uh, you'll notice that this is the one that you hate the most about Mordo when you face off against him in a raid because heal block kind of ruins your team. Uh, it doesn't really do much damage, but it can't miss, so it will always kind of just pop everybody at least once. Uh, and the the two turns of heal block can be beneficial. The 30% extra damage is actively useless. Don't even look at this ability. Too many sorcerers is another tier four, probably solid investment uh, because of how the energy works. So at tier at level four, you know last tier three upgrade on death of a character heal self 10% of this character's max health. On death of a mystic heal self and most injured super uh, natural ally for 15% of this character's max health and grand ability energy to self and one to two ability energy to that ally uh, at tier fours he grants one to two ability energy on the death of a mystic uh, on death of any character heal the most injured supernatural ally for 10 percent this is your side this is their side uh he can be a passive healer strong enough to gain all of the value uh, that he possibly could but the one to two ability energy on death of a mystic is pretty much right here is where it goes in the conversation and it is one of his most uh, important tier fours in order to be able to counter uh, teams in war so if you do need this team to be able to beat very specific characters in war this is one of the upgrades much like the one from doctor strange and of course ghost rider that will really key in on how successful your team can be Otherwise, you're just going to end up relying on RNG and you know if that that might be good enough But I think the investment of tier fours in here to, to shore up a war counter might be worth it for a lot of people uh, No other notes on him uh, Other than the fact that he has a little bit of value outside as a utility character in the old days before the supernatural came up You did use him with uh, venom and carnage just to keep the debuffs always going but you don't need to live in that world now. He is kind of useful though. So if you do unlock him early, uh, he's good just on his own as a kind of controller with a whole bunch of cool effects. Uh, and the last character on this team will be Elsa. You'll notice she's last because I'm favorited her because I'm farming her because I only had about a four or five star Elsa through her first pass on Blitz and I just never had the opportunity to invest in her. So take a quick look at her, Blood and Guns, Decent damage, 35% uh, piercing means it goes through armor, so no big deal. But bonus attack five times for 35% piercing, it's six attacks. Uh, so it looks like it's 35% and it does go up to 40%, but uh, this isn't 10% piercing. This is 60% piercing damage. It's a lot. Uh, this is a great upgrade for her. She is a very important damage dealer. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily do it first, but I would do it eventually if you were trying to push the amount of damage she's doing. Trick shot, uh, attack primary target, and attack the most injured enemy for 290% damage, ignoring taunt and stealth. Uh, this is it. She hits one guy and then executes another guy. That's why her second attack does damage. Obviously, it can hit the same person if that first attack makes them the most injured. Uh, would I invest in this? Yes, she's a damage dealer. This makes it 300 and. 350 huge huge damage it swings um, can be enough and since this attack isn't available on turn one but it will become available more as energy is getting thrown out by your team you may end up using this more often than you think you do so kind of test it out see how often you're going to use it if you think you're going to use it two or three times in a fight by all means this investment will be worth it for you uh, scatter guns gain offense up for two turns which is great because it means all of her assists and counters will also be offensed up attack primary target and adjacent targets for 220 damage plus 15% per supernatural ally so 
another ability that clearly does want tier fours because again damage dealer is this because it goes to 25 percent per natural ally and 250 base since there's four supernatural allies it is a 350 percent damage attack to three characters huge huge damage uh, sometimes if you've seen some strong ones come out she will hit and just obliterate two or three characters at a time this is a very very high impact damaging attack uh, and all of her attacks one of the reasons they're so great is because of her passive which is curse word uh, curse word is on miss or any ally miss this character has three or more supernatural allies duh attack that target for 220 damage on enemy dodge attack that target for 220 damage uh, gain 10 percent crit chance gain 10 percent accuracy uh, therefore if she's blinded she still runs up with chances to hit regardless that said uh, if you do put tier fours into her this goes to 20 percent accuracy per supernatural ally and just to kind of show off what her base accuracy is it is 120 which means she is 200 percent accurate what that means is if she is blinded she will hit again is this ability worth it well that depends do you really want your supernatural team to be able to be a war counter meta team if the answer is yes pretty much everything in elsa is worth it this of course is one of the most impactful things you can put into her as it will guarantee that she can never miss her attack and since all she does is attack please go all in uh, it also obviously benefits the most from the fact that her passive uh which will hit for about 270 with tier fours, uh, will often hit even if the rest of your characters are blinded. This will give you a little bit of a hedge in fights where you are dealing with characters who throw out blind, like, I don't know, Taskmaster or Mysterio? I guess he throws out blind. No one cares about Mysterio. This team can auto without tier fours. Anyway, uh, Elsa's high up on my list because she doesn't require any of these tier fours but she gets so much better with literally anyone that if you close your eyes and start clicking on tier four upgrades for her she'll be a better version of the character for um with them uh, that said uh tcp breakpoints 70 to 80k this team's gonna walk through a lot of fights in the early stages of the game if you get the team to 100k you could probably beat even god tier thor node in the mystic campaign with just the strength of what they do once they're about 100 to 150k they are a solid war offense team that are capable of beating anything but the meta and of course as you invest more tier fours and abilities into them as they start pushing the 200 250k uh, with the correct tier 4 lineup, they basically become a punch-up god team against most of the meta in the game. Kind of like how Fantastic Four works, but actually just a little bit more reliable without any specific needs of investment. A lot of it does come from practice and understanding, and basically your tier 4 upgrades in this team really does just reduce the amount of RNG you don't control. Uh, that said, if it is important for you to have a supernatural team, feel free to uh, invest in them the way i've mentioned because that will enable them to weep now if you notice tony hasn't invested in them and you're like but tony how are you advocating for something you haven't done it's like well because i'm not just me i'm me and my alliance and a whole bunch of my friends and everyone in stream and i gain information from them now i don't need this team to be able to hard counter 400k teams uh, because i do have other people that can if a day came up where this team was necessary for me to be able to beat one of them uh, I would, but as of right now, I do happen to see a handful of 250 to 300k Colson teams, and uh, those teams are actually still relatively easy to beat. I use this team as either a cleanup team or as a team to beat up very strong medium war teams like Sinister Six or... Nope, Sinister Six, that's pretty much it. Uh, I have been able to beat Brawlers with them. Um, I think I would beat Brawlers significantly better if I did have Tier 4s and Mordo stun, so I can make sure that CM wasn't killing me, but it is what it is. Uh, so that's my stance on Supernatural. As far as rating, uh, this is a solid A team. Um, they're not great in every single game mode, which is kind of one of the qualifications for S. You either have to be the absolute best at one thing or 
uh, phenomenal across the board. They're not great in every game mode, but what they do for war and what they can do for random fights as well as the independent value of the characters, uh, the team and the characters themselves are very good. They're an A team. Uh, also, let's be clear, they're very good at Blitz too. With very low investment, you will get wins clicking auto with this team, as you saw earlier. So, A team all around. Uh, among some of the better teams in the game, your standard sure to win teams, but again with meta teams or with pre-constructed teams like this, that's what you expect out of them. You expect them to work or be good or have a purpose. They do have that purpose, they outshine that purpose, and the investment you put into them really does bridge a lot of gaps. Um, great team overall. Now. Do me a favor guys comment below and let me know what you think of the supernatural do you think they're overrated like some people do do you think that they're underrated and can be used for more stuff than even i've said uh do you think ghost rider is the best character in the game tell me more about why you're wrong I'm kidding uh ghost rider is the coolest character in the game by a margin but i just don't think he get i think he gets a little bit more hype for what he does than he deserves but i do think that on this team ghost rider and elsa bloodstone are absolutely phenomenal so comment below let me know what you think of these characters uh other than that have a good night have a great day i've been tony scongeli and i'll catch you later